Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. It's berry season, people. It's time to make berry meringue shortcake. And it's so easy. The meringue bakes right on top of the cake as it bakes. It's wild, it's outrageous. And you can use any berry combination you want and pick one, pick all, or you can say, forget the berries, let's use something else like peaches or plums. So the endless variety that you can make is wild and it's very impressive for friends and family and barbecues or any time. Now, before I get started, I'd like you to click that notification button so you can see all my videos and tips because I don't want you to miss out because they're awesome. All right, this is the creaming method of mixing and I've mentioned it before over and over again. There's only a few mixing methods in baking and this is one of the most common. So I am going to prep my pan. This is a nine inch spring form pan. I have sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray and I'm gonna put it on the side. All right, I'm just gonna put it aside. Now, in a bowl, I have three quarters of a cup of cake flour. It's got slightly less protein in it, so we're gonna get a very, and I mean a very tender cake. It's outrageous, people. You have no idea. You've gotta make this. All right, one quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder. That's our chemical leavener. You're gonna whisk your dry ingredients up. I always do that ahead because if you don't do it properly and get everything homogeneously blended, you can end up with little holes, uh, which is known as tunneling uh, in your baked goods, and you don't want it to look like a little mouse has been tunneling through your cake. Not on my watch. Now I'm gonna put this aside with my spoon because I'm actually gonna get it ready to add to our electric mixer and our other ingredients. So remember, creaming method of mixing, you cream softened butter. This is five tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're gonna put it in our electric mixer. Half a cup of granulated sugar, all right? And with our paddle attachment on medium high speed, remember the name of the game is to aerate that butter. You're trying to get as much air into that butter because those air cells are going to actually enlarge when our baking powder actually starts creating uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, molecules in the oven. And when that happens, the cake rises. That's our leavening. So they all work together. All these ingredients work together, sort of like a football team uh, for the end game which is an incredibly light, fluffy cake. So in the meantime, I have two large eggs, which I've cracked ahead of time. You wanna make sure you do that because you don't want any shells. You never wanna crack it directly into your electric mixer. And then I put in about a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. I get it right in the egg so I don't have to forget it and it adds an absolute incredible vanilla flavor to the cake. Then I have one quarter cup of plain, fully fatted yogurt. And if you can't find fully fatted, fat-free will do well. But you want a plain yogurt, you don't have yogurt, you can use sour cream. One quarter cup, that's all you need. And when you have the creamy method of mixing, you do the sugar and the butter until they're light and fluffy. And then on lower speed, you add one egg at a time. And that's what I'm doing right now, one egg at a time. Let that incorporate. And then we're gonna alternate wet and dry ingredients. So we're gonna add about half of our uh, mixed dry ingredients, our flour, baking powder, and salt, and a half of the, actually we're gonna add the full amount of this yogurt. You wanna alternate. And because it's such a small amount, we can add the full amount of the liquid ingredients right away, and I'll show you. So once we get going, occasionally you may wanna push down the sides of the of the bowl to get everything homogeneously blended. If anything sort of pops up on the sides of your, of your mixing bowl, get that in there. All right, now we're gonna add our remaining egg and what little left of our vanilla there is. Now, alternating. All right, you always wanna start 
with the dry ingredients first and end with the dry ingredients. That's the rule in baking. If any, if nothing's going to happen if you break it, but it makes the best emulsion. And that's what this batter is. It's a water uh, in, in oil emulsion. So on low speed, I'm going to add half of my flour mixture, which has been homogeneously blended. So the baking powder is evenly distributed. The salt is evenly distributed. All right, so that's about half. I'm going to incorporate that. You don't want to overmix once you start adding flour because that's when you can create gluten. Gluten creates toughness in a baked good. So you want just enough gluten in a baked good, like a cake like this, a tender cake like this, to just hold it together and create structure. All right, so on low speed, I'm going to add my, my luscious yogurt. And this really creates a lot of moistness and tenderness in our cake because it actually can coat the gluten strands. So once that's in there, you want to just get a little bit down there. If you have to stop the sides, you know, stop your machine, scrape down the sides, you can do that as well. Now I add the remainder of my dry ingredient, my flour mixture. And I hate to say it, folks, we're done with our batter. Like, this is it. It's the easiest batter ever. OK, I'm just going to up it real quick to get a, a quick go around, and we're done. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's awesome. So I'm going to get this. It almost looks like a frosting. Isn't that luscious? Luscious. You can see it's slightly yellow from the butter. It's so good. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to take it off of here. And I always do another scrape down. Remember, because that bowl on the bottom, I'm going to show you in a minute. Don't worry, I'm always going to show you the bottom of the bowl. That's what I do. Because it doesn't always get mixed up, especially when you have an electric mixer. So we're going to go around. Get everything in there that maybe wasn't homogeneously blended in. Oh, it's so beautiful. Almost looks like a frosting. All right, and that's what it should look like. It's a perfectly emulsified mixture. So if you notice, I'm using some science terms because there's a lot of science in baking. And that's what I like to explain. All right, so now I'm going to take our pan, move our luscious berries away. And I have sprayed this with nonstick cooking spray. If you would like, you can also line it with parchment. I am not going to do that because this cake comes out beautifully. I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to show you a trick, which I have showed you before. But if this is your first time watching one of my videos, and hopefully it won't be the last, I want to show you what I do and the trick I use to spread a batter. So I don't use the rubber spatula. It can make a mess, it can make things so they're not totally um, sort of distributed well amongst the pan. I take an offset spatula, and this is a small one, they come larger, and I'm just going to pretend this is the hand of a clock, all right? So I'm just going to gently spread, and then I'm going to go around with the rounded part against the sides and just sort of smear the cake all around until it becomes evenly distributed and it doesn't go up the sides. It's going to touch the sides, but it's not going to go up the sides too much. That way it'll rise evenly. You won't get any humps or bumps and lumps. Um, this is a fail-safe way to distribute your cake batter in your pan. It works every time and you don't need any of those tricky gadgets that you have to put around the sides that you can see uh, that are sold on the markets. I've never had a problem with this. I've never had humps in my cake. I'm not making any camel cakes with humps, and this will rise beautifully. So once we're done with this, we're not ready for the oven just yet. My oven is preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, but now we're ready to make our meringue and put it on top of that before it goes in the oven. All right, so it's time to make our meringue topping over our batter. 
But before I do that, I just want to let you know, I made a mistake. It's 350 degree oven, 350 degree Fahrenheit oven, not 375, okay? 350 degrees, uh, that's preheated and ready to go. I have two large egg whites that I have allowed to sit at room temperature. So they're a little bit warmer than ice cold because there is uh, a surface tension with egg whites and you wanna make sure that's broken when you beat them and create a meringue. Uh, you'll get a better volume if you allow them to be at room temperature. Uh, all right, so I have quarter cup of granulated sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar creates a stability for our meringue. It doesn't make them more voluminous, it just creates a more stable meringue. So it's an acid, denatures some of the proteins in the albumin of the meringue. So I'm gonna let this rip on warp speed. Uh, maybe three quarters of warp speed, maybe like medium high before super high. And we're gonna put the cream of tartar in one eighth of a teaspoon once your egg whites get sort of foamy. We're gonna put the cream of tartar in, all right? So we're at a foam. I'm gonna add that, all right? And we're gonna let this go on super high speed until I have close to soft peaks. And then I'm gonna gradually add, gradually is the key, one quarter cup of granulated sugar. I'm enunciating because this is louder than me, almost. All right, so we're just about there. Let me just show you what that looks like real quick. I just want to show you. So you can see, see that? Sort of foamy, but not really, really stiff peaks. Now we're ready to add it. Don't add it before. About a tablespoon at a time. Let it, the sugar incorporate. Add another tablespoon or so. One quarter cup of sugar is about four tablespoons. So you're gonna make about four to five additions, depending on how much you add at a time. Now we're on the highest speed that my mixer can be on, the highest. And we're gonna let that go till it stiff peaks. And I mean, when we take our, our whip or our beater attachment off, those, that meringue is gonna stand up like a mountaintop, straight and tall, without overbeating. All right. Now, when you add the sugar, it prevents them from being overbeaten because the sugar interferes with that. Now, look at this beautiful thing. Oh, look at those. Ha! Straight up to the sky, right? Oh, my goodness. Lovely. Just like Mount Everest. Beautiful. All right? See that? So I'm going to just give it a quick bangaroo to get all that off. All right, again, I take a clean, dry rubber spatula. You don't want to add any fat to this. I'm just going to go around gently, make sure everything is incorporated in here. And then I'm going to bring my beautiful cake batter in my pan. And I'm just going to sort of gently plop it on top, for lack of a better word. So you see, I've just sort of plopped it on top. You see? All right, so I'm just going to sort of plop all around, and then we're gonna spread with a clean offset spatula, just like we did the batter. But this time, we're not gonna go all the way to the edges because we don't want it to stick to the sides of the pan. All right, there's a method to my madness. All right, so we're gonna get all this luscious stuff off. All right. And then we're just going to gradually, just gingerly, and it can be, you know, sort of like lumps and bumps. It doesn't have to be super smooth like the batter, but you're just going to sort of spread it and flatten it out a little. And it, it's going to make a beautiful meringue layer. It's really going to be nice. 
And I'm just checking how long. I usually let this bake between 40 and 45 minutes or until a small sharp knife going through the meringue and the cake should come out clean. And it may take a little while. Okay, remember you're making two distinct uh, different types of, of batters. You're making that meringue and you're making the cake batter. So you want to make sure the cake batter is really fully baked. All right, so I'm not touching the sides. If it touches a little, uh, it, it'll be okay. All right, so you see what I've done? Now we go into the 350 degree oven, 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 40 to 45 minutes till a small sharp knife comes out clean. All right, so while our berry meringue shortcake, the cake part with the meringue is baking, I'm gonna make the whipped cream. And we can store this in the fridge even up to a couple of days because we're gonna stabilize it with a little yogurt. Now yogurt is acidic and actually will prevent the whipped cream from going back down into its liquid state. It's a little trick and it works. Otherwise you have to stabilize it with unflavored gelatin. And we're not gonna do that because we are free, carefree today, and we just want to do it super simple. All right, three quarters of a cup of cold, cold heavy cream with a splash of pure vanilla extract in there in my electric mixer. All right, I am going to add one quarter cup of fully fatted plain yogurt. You can use sour cream as well if you want. That's our acidity, we're gonna add it right in. And then just about a heaping tablespoon of confectioner's sugar, just to give it slight sweetness because our meringue and our cake are already sweet, so we don't need that much. Now with our whip attachment, we're gonna go on warp speed, but because I don't wanna be covered with it, I take my clean kitchen towel, uh, put it over, all right, over the top, and then I let her rip. And make sure you watch it every couple of minutes. Make sure you check. You want stiff peaks. And then I'm going to take this, put it into another bowl, and chill it so that when my cake cools down and we're ready to serve, we're going to top it with all this glorious whipped cream. And each slice is going to be topped with a mixed berry topping. Very delicious and very easy. So you're gonna wait a minute or so, don't over whip. If you over whip, it's almost there. If you over whip, you will make butter. Butter, baby. And I actually have a video on how to make butter. It's very easy to do, but we don't wanna do it now. We wanna make whipped cream. Really delicious whipped cream. One more, one more go around. I like it stiff. If you don't like it as stiff and you like it more so it sort of dribbles like a creme chantilly, which is sort of a lighter whip, do that. But I like it stiff. All right. I think we're there. Oh, yeah. We're there. We're there. I want you to see how beautiful. And then I'm going to put this in a bowl. Whoop. I'm going to get this off of here. There we go. See that? That's what I'm looking for, all right? And it's taken a lot of effort for me not to lick this. So I'm going to put all this in a bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and put it in the fridge to stay chilled. All right, so it's time to make our berry topping. It's going to go on top of our meringue shortcake. So while I'm still baking off my cake and my whipped cream is safely in the fridge chilling, I have between one and a half and two cups of mixed berries, any variation you want. I have blackberries, strawberries, raspberries. You can add blueberries if you want. You can do all of one type of fruit. It's up to you. They should be washed and dried. Um, and they should be quartered if they're really large. So some of my strawberries were large, so I just quartered them. And I like to add a little bit of lemon juice just to keep the flavor fresh. 
So I have about two teaspoons of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, and I have about two tablespoons of seedless raspberry jam. If you want to use apricot jam or orange marmalade, whatever you want to do. I just love the sweetness of a little bit of jam in here and it will help bring out some of the water, the natural water that's in our berries and create sort of like a little sauce. And that's all you need. You don't need any more sugar. Now, if you're against jam, you can actually sprinkle a little sugar in there. So maybe a couple tablespoons of granulated sugar. You could do confectioner sugar. You could do coconut sugar. Um, or you can even do something like agave syrup, whatever you feel like doing to sweeten them up. Because sometimes the berries are not as sweet as we would like them. And you see how it coats them and it glazes them? And now I'm going to wrap this and put this in the fridge uh, and it can be done up to several hours. Uh, and then I'm going to top each slice with some whipped cream and some of our delicious berry topping. Berry meringue shortcake has cooled. I took it out of the pan and I put it on a beautiful serving platter and it slid right out. If you take an offset spatula, it slides right out. If you use nonstick cooking spray on the bottom, it worked fabulous. So I have the beautiful cake, I have the meringue on top. Now I'm gonna put our chilled whipped cream on top. And I'm just gonna actually put that all around. Remember, it's been stabilized with our yogurt. All right. And I'm just gonna give it a little little spread, but I want it, I don't want to spread it all over the meringues. I want it to be seen. Now, if I was going to serve this whole thing now, I would top it with my berries right now and serve it because the berries will make it soft. So what I'm going to do, because I'm not serving it right now, I'm serving a slice to you. I'm going to cut through. Okay. I'll make a nice big piece. And then we're going to top it with our berries. And then I'm just going to grate a little. Oh, pretty. Pretty. And delicious. And so many things going on here. So I'm going to put a little berry on there. Just a little berry. And it makes sort of its own sauce with the preserves. Really, really pretty. And then I'm just going to zest it a little for you. Just want to zest it with a dry, washed lemon. And you only want to zest with the yellow part. And you don't want to do too much, but there is a little lemon juice, as you remember, in the fruit. So this just complements it. So pretty. You don't have to overdo it. So beautiful. So berrylicious. So great for summer. Oh, I hope you make this. I hope you make this recipe. You're going to love it. I hope you become a subscriber. Till next time.